M S W Media. A quarter billion dollars spent, close to four million votes cast, and neither candidate broke 50% in the race for Georgia's Senate seat. As we ramp up for the runoff, find out what's really going on with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution's Politically Georgia podcast. Get expert analysis from insiders Greg Bluestein. This runoff election is consequential. And Patricia Murphy. Immense amounts of significance riding on this Senate race. It's in-depth local coverage of the Senate runoff you won't get anywhere else. Politically Georgia, available on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Shopify presents cool sheets from aha to I suffered from the wrong kind of hot in bed, heat induced insomnia. That was my aha moment. Bed sheets that keep you cool. Then I thought, how do I even sell bed sheets? That's when I had the idea that made it all possible. Signing up on Shopify. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash offer 22. Shopify.com slash offer 22. Thanks to Aura Frames for supporting the Daily Beans. Aura Frames makes digital picture frames designed to easily fill your home with photos of family and friends shared instantly from an app. Right now, you can take advantage of Aura's Cyber Monday sale and get up to $50 off Aura's best-selling carver mat frames by going to auraframes.com slash dailybeans. And thanks to Mrs. Fields for supporting the Daily Beans. Who doesn't love fresh-from-the-oven, melt-in-your-mouth cookies? Mrs. Fields will wrap up your delicious cookies in unique creative packages that will thrill the people who get them. And right now, Mrs. Fields is giving the best deal available only to podcast listeners. You get 25% off everything site-wide when you go to mrsfields.com slash beans. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Monday, November 28th, 2022. Today, Democrats limit the margin of victory for Republicans in the House. Special counsel Jack Smith takes Trump's legal team to school on Thanksgiving. Bigger than expected early voting turnout in the Warnock Walker runoff in Georgia. Donald Trump denies dining with Nazis. Jeffrey Epstein's victims sue Deutsche Bank and Chase, calling them complicit. And the January 6th committee report will be largely about Donald due to Liz Cheney's excised influence over the panel. I'm your host, Allison Gill. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful holiday weekend. Dana is traveling today, but she'll be back tomorrow. So I will be here with you to give you the news. I hope that you had a wonderful and safe holiday weekend. I really do. I got a nice bit of relaxation time, although I did spend a lot of it scheming to start a new podcast. I know I said I wouldn't, but uh, I just really couldn't help myself. It'll be a podcast about the special counsel. I have a little bit of experience in running podcasts about special counsels. So um, (laughs) I had an influx of asks from a lot of people who uh, wanted me to start another one. And um, I'll have more information as as it develops. I believe our first episode is going to drop in a week or so. So just keep listening to The Beans all this week for more information. Follow me on Twitter at MullerSheWrote for more information. And of course, I will be updating patrons who, if you're a patron, you already have the the art and you know who the co-hosts are and all of that stuff is uh, available to patrons. And if you're a patron of The Daily Beans and Muller, she wrote, you will also be a patron of this new podcast. So I'm very excited about it. I'm working on that diligently, along with the book and uh, the beans and clean up on aisle 45. <laughs> if I didn't have enough to do, I certainly do now. But I'm still taking the week after Christmas off. Everyone at MSW Media is getting that break. So um, I just want to make sure everybody is aware there won't be any daily beans. During that week, although, you know, if there's important news, I'm sure I'll post it on our Patreon page or on our Twitter feed at Muller She Wrote. Thank you so much to our patrons. You make everything possible. All right, we have a lot of news to get to. Let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right, first up, some special counsel news. On Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day, special counsel Jack Smith responded to a letter Trump lawyer Jim Trusty wrote to the 11th Circuit after his embarrassing showing in front of them last Tuesday. During that hearing, the very conservative Chief Judge Pryor asked Jim Trusty if he could think of just one case 
one case where a special master was appointed pursuant to a civil proceeding in the pre-indictment stage. And Jim rightfully said, no, I can't think of any. But then he decided to write a letter to the court afterwards saying, oh, hey, hey, I thought of one. He said, quote, the question raised was whether a court had previously asserted equitable jurisdiction to enjoin the government from using seized materials in an investigation pending review by a special master. The answer is yes. The U.S. agreed to this approach and the existence of jurisdiction in the Rudy Giuliani case. And under mutual agreement of the parties, no materials were utilized in the investigation until the special master review was complete. End quote. Now, I'm not sure if Donald or Tom Fitton convinced Jim Trusty to write that idiotic letter to the 11th Circuit. But on Thanksgiving Day, special counsel Jack Smith himself sent a letter of rebuttal to the 11th Circuit. He says, quote, Jim Trusty is incorrect. As plaintiff recognizes, the court in the Rudy case did not, quote, enjoin the government, unquote. The government itself volunteered the special master approach. Second, Rudy is a lawyer, so there are actual privilege concerns. Third, the documents in that case were released on a rolling basis. And finally, Rudy didn't sue the government in a separate civil proceeding, invoking a district court's anomalous jurisdiction. None of those is true here. <laughs> Yours truly, Jack Smith, special counsel. I have a lot more to say about this letter, but I'm saving it for the first episode of the new podcast, which will be out soon. Please stay tuned this week on Twitter and in the patron page for all of that information. There's a lot to go over. Next up, let's talk about elections. First, Democratic Rep. Mary Peltola on Wednesday became the first Alaska native to win a full term in Congress, securing re-election alongside Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski, who both defeated challengers endorsed by the former guy after state officials finished a final round of vote counting. They have ranked choice voting. After the final round, Murkowski had 53.7 percent of the vote to just 46.3 percent for Chewbacca. Chiba, Chiba, <laughs> Chewbacca, <laughs> Chewbacca, uh, the, the Trump backed candidate. And in the House race, Peltola had 55 percent of the vote to Palin, Sarah Palin's 45 percent, 10 points. And it looks like we'll be able to hold the GOP lead in the House to just five seats or less, making it next to impossible for Kevin McCarthy to find an easy victory in his bid to become speaker. Womp womp. We will keep you posted on the GOP House shit show as it unfolds. And former President Trump on Tuesday night had dinner with Nick Fuentes, an outspoken anti-Semite and racist, who is one of the country's most prominent young white supremacists, neo-Nazis, at Trump's private club Mar-a-Lago in Florida. And that's according to advisors to Mr. Trump. They conceded that truth on Friday. Also at the dinner was performer Ye, known as Kanye West, who has also been denounced for making anti-Semitic statements. Mr. West traveled to meet with Trump at the club and brought Mr. Fuentes along, according to the advisors. The fourth attendee at the four-person dinner is one Karen Giorno, a veteran political operative who worked on Trump's 2016 campaign as his state director in Florida. She also confirmed that Fuentes was there. Attempts to reach Fuentes through an intermediary on Friday were unsuccessful. In recent years, Fuentes, who's just 24, has developed a high profile in the far right and forged ties with such Republican lawmakers as Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia and Representative Paul Gosar of Arizona, largely through his leadership of an annual white supremacist neo-Nazi event called the America First Political Action Conference, AFPAC. OK, now he's a Holocaust denier and unabashed racist, and he openly uses hateful language on his podcast. In recent weeks, he called for the military to be sent into black neighborhoods and demanded that Jews leave the country. During the dinner, according to a person briefed on what took place, Fuentes described himself as part of Trump's base of supporters. Trump remarked that his advisors urge him to read speeches using a teleprompter and don't like it when he ad libs remarks. Fuentes said Trump's supporters prefer the ad libs at which Trump turned to others and declared that he liked Mr. Fuentes, adding, quote, he gets me. In a statement on Friday, Trump said, quote, Kanye West very much wanted to visit Mar-a-Lago. Our dinner meeting was intended to be Kanye and me only, but he arrived with a guest whom I had never met and knew nothing about. That's what the statement said. And it also said nothing about Fuentes being a neo-Nazi. In a post later Friday on his social media website, Truth Social, Trump said that Mr. West, quote, unexpectedly showed up with three of his friends whom I knew nothing about. He said 
The dinner took place, quote, with many members present on the back patio. The dinner was quick and uneventful. They left for the airport. So just anybody can walk in to Mar-a-Lago. I thought those documents were secure, Mr. Former Guy. Early Friday evening, Trump made a third attempt at defending himself on Truth Social, saying that Kanye had sought business advice from him, expressed no anti-Semitism, and I appreciated all the nice things he said about me on Tucker Carlson. Why wouldn't I agree to meet? I also, I didn't know Nick Fuentes. That's what he said. <laughs> Just mentioned him by name. Oh, and I don't know Nick Fuentes. Even taking at face value Trump's protestation that he knew nothing of Fuentes, the apparent ease with which Fuentes arrived at the home of a former president who was under multiple criminal investigations, including one related to keeping classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, underscores the undisciplined, uncontrolled nature of the former guy's post-presidency just 10 days into his third campaign for the White House. Only a handful of Republicans, including at least one close ally of Trump, castigated him over meeting with Fuentes and yay, although many didn't mention them by name. Quote, to my friend Donald Trump, you are better than this. That's David M. Friedman, who was Trump's longtime bankruptcy lawyer. I guess he <laughs> was very busy. And then his appointee as ambassador to Israel. And he wrote that on Twitter. Well, David Friedman is wrong. Donald is not better than this. It's exactly who he is. Quote, this is just another example of an awful lack of judgment from Donald Trump, which, combined with his past poor judgments, make him an untenable general election candidate for the Republican Party in 2024. That's a pretty bold statement. That was from Chris Christie, probably because he wants to run for, <laughs> for president in 2024. Now, in a statement that did not name Trump, but was issued in response to the Fuentes dinner, Matt Brooks, chief exec of the Republican Jewish Coalition, said, quote, we strongly condemn the virulent anti-Semitism of Ye Kanye West and Nick Fuentes and call on all political leaders to reject their message of hate and refuse to meet with them. Jonathan Greenblatt, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, also condemned Trump's meeting with Fuentes. Greenblatt said that the idea that Trump or any serious contender for higher office would meet with him and validate him by sharing a meal and spending time is appalling. And really, you can't say that you oppose hate and break bread with haters. It's that simple. Fuentes, who attended the bloody far-right rally in Charlottesville in 2017, which prompted Joe Biden to run for president, is best known for running a white nationalist youth organization known as America First, who adherents call themselves Groypers or the Groyper Army. At a so-called Stop the Steal rally in November of 2020 in D.C., Fuentes urged his followers to storm every state capitol on January 20th until President Trump is inaugurated for four more years. The following month at a similar event, Fuentes led a crowd in chanting destroy the GOP and urged people not to vote in the January 2021 Georgia Senate runoff elections. On January 6th, Fuentes led a large group of Groypers to the Capitol, where they rallied outside in support of Donald. The next day, Fuentes wrote on Twitter, the assault on the Capitol was awesome and I'm not going to pretend it wasn't, unquote. At least seven people with connections to his America First organization have been charged with federal crimes in connection with the Capitol attack. And in January, Fuentes was issued a subpoena by the 1-6 committee seeking information about his role. Ye, who ran for president in 2020, has said he will run again in 2024. He posted on Twitter a video in which he described the dinner. He claimed that Trump was really impressed with Mr. Fuentes. Kanye also said he asked Trump to serve as his running mate and claimed that Trump spoke derogatorily about West's ex-wife, Kim Kardashian. Okay. So that happened. And I'm glad the media is picking it up. I'm sure it'll be out of the news cycle, maybe by the time this airs tomorrow, although they might run it one more day after the holiday. It should be on the front of everyone's minds at all times. This is Don. This is who he is. This is who he is. I, people who are surprised. No, no one listening to this show has any question in their mind about that. We all saw the video, the, the, the anti-Semitic video propaganda video he showed at the ellipse on january 6th we've all we've seen this this is not new all right we're going to be right back i have a lot of news but we have to take a quick break so stay with us after these messages we'll be right back hey everyone you know sleeping is my favorite so uh, it's been so much better since i got my custom-made mattress from helix sleep everyone is unique we all sleep differently and that's why helix has several different mattress models to choose from each one is designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences the Helix lineup now has 14 unique mattresses. They have a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, they even have a mattress made just for kids, which is awesome. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you? You can jump online at helixsleep.com slash dailybeans, take their two-minute online sleep quiz, 
and you will be matched with the perfect mattress for your sleep preferences. They'll even ship it to you free of charge. Uh, I took the sleep quiz. I was matched with the Helix Midnight because I'm a side sleeper and I like a medium firm bed. It's the best mattress I've ever had. Helix mattresses are American made. They come with a 10 or a 15 year warranty, depending on the model. You get to try it out for 100 sleeps with no risk. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for you for free and give you a full refund. There's no risk here. I love my Helix sleep mattress and you will too. Right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for listeners. Just go to helixsleep.com slash dailybeans. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, everybody, welcome back. There's still more news. This one comes from Hugo Lowell at The Guardian about the January 6th committee. He writes, the, the House January 6th Select Committee's final report is expected to focus heavily on Trump's involvement in the Capitol attack and his culpability, opening a rift on the panel weeks before it's scheduled to release middle of December. The nature of the final report alongside criminal referrals to the Justice Department is expected to be the defining legacy of the investigation that brought into sharp relief Trump's efforts to stop the congressional certification of Joe Biden's election win and return to the White House for a second term. As the final report is currently drafted, an overwhelming focus on the findings of the gold team that has been examining Trump and White House advisors roles in orchestrating a multi-part strategy to overturn the election. That's what it's about, according to multiple sources familiar with the thing. Uh, well, I, I said the thing. Hugo wrote this much more eloquently than, <laughs> than me. So you need to go to The Guardian to look at this. The move to home in on Trump, principally driven by the select committee's vice chair, Liz Cheney, was in part because the actions of the former president, which a federal judge has said probably violated several criminal statutes, were particularly compelling, according to sources. But that fixation on Trump has exposed in recent weeks a deepening rift on the panel with the since departed lawyers on the other teams, including the blue team, which examined issues like intelligence failures by the FBI, angered that their findings were set to be relegated to appendices. The simmering discontent for some of the current and former staff has since reached the panel's members. And an NBC News story earlier this month has since prompted discussions about changing some of the eight chapters in the final report, though they were already broadly complete. The members, one of the sources says, have discussed inserting some of the findings from the non-gold team investigators into the narrative, but the members have been reluctant to highlight conduct by Trump's allies that might have been unsavory, but probably not criminal. Not sure why. The final report is still scheduled to be released in the middle of December. And after the Senate runoff election in Georgia, where the Trump-backed candidate Walker trailed the Democratic incumbent Warnock in the general election in a disappointing midterms for the Republicans. At the same time, the select committee is weighing what potential and criminal civil referrals to the Justice Department might involve. The panel was scheduled on Tuesday to receive a briefing from special subcommittee led by Congressman Jamie Raskin examining the matter. The subcommittee, which also involves Cheney, Schiff and Zoe Lofgren, members with legal background or in, in this case of Schiff, prosecutorial experience, has also been tasked with resolving other outstanding issues, including how to respond to Trump's lawsuit against his subpoena. The spokesperson for the panel could not be reached for comment immediately. The question of whether and what referrals to make to the DOJ has hovered over the investigation for months since the select committee's lawyers came to believe Trump was involved in crimes. The select committee won a substantial victory in March when U.S. District Court Judge David Carter ruled that Trump likely, more likely than not, preponderance of the evidence, committed multiple felonies in his efforts to overturn the election. But some members on the panel in recent months have questioned the need for referrals to the Justice Department, which has ramped up its investigation into the Capitol attack and issued subpoenas to Trump's allies demanding appearances before at least two grand juries in Washington. As we know, Attorney General Merrick Garland last week appointed Jack Smith to serve as special counsel overseeing the probe into whether Trump mishandled national security materials or obstructed justice, as well as key elements of the criminal inquiry to the Capitol attack. And even before the appointment of special counsel, the department asked former Vice President Mike Pence to voluntarily testify to a grand jury, and he's considering it. So our friend Hugo Lowell has been given the new position at The Guardian, a senior investigative reporter for Trump and the Department of Justice. So do yourself a favor, follow him on social media, kick a couple of bucks to The Guardian or on their website to support their work. Next up, Jeffrey Epstein's victims filed a pair of class action lawsuits accusing Deutsche Bank, don't you want a loan? and J.P. Morgan Chase of, quote, complicity, unquote, in his crimes, Epstein's crimes, claiming the megabanks ignored red flags of sex trafficking for their own profit. The lawsuits allege that the banks, quote, knowingly benefited and received things of value for assisting, supporting, facilitating, and otherwise providing the most critical service for the Epstein sex trafficking organization to successfully rape, sexually assault, and coercively sex traffic girls and young women. 
filed by women anonymized as Jane Doe. The lawsuits were filed in the Southern District of New York, where Epstein and his co-conspirator Ghislaine Maxwell were prosecuted on Thursday, the day that New York's Adult Survivors Act went into effect. The statute gave alleged victims of sexual abuse another opportunity to raise claims that otherwise would have been barred by the statute of limitations. Epstein's victims, longtime lawyer Bradley Edwards, who signed the lawsuit, also cites the Trafficking Victim Protection Act and against Deutsche specifically, the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, RICO. Combined, the federal complaints span roughly 180 pages in total. Other prominent attorneys for Epstein victims, including David Bowie and Secret Macaulay, have their names attached to both complaints. Both similarly worded, the complaints accuse both of the banks of intimate knowledge of Epstein's empire of predation. Quote, the Epstein sex trafficking venture purpose, including enticing, a uh, venture's purpose, including enticing, obtaining, harboring, and transporting the young victims without drawing unwanted attention from law enforcement. As they state, the venture had everything a sex trafficking organization needed, funding, infrastructure, the appearance of legitimacy, and perhaps most importantly, a complicit banking institution. It was by many accounts the most powerful and wealthiest sex trafficking venture ever created. So thanks to Adam Klasfeld at Law and Crime for that reporting. And uh, just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. The first Saturday of early voting, the general election drew 79,682 people, more than double the 2018 number. Votes from red counties, early voting on Saturday, 6,338. Early voting will continue through Friday. Those taking advantage of Saturday voting, including college students, home for Thanksgiving, Police officers and ambulance workers with busy schedules, lifelong voters who make it a point to always cast their ballots on the first day they're allowed, and retirees seeking an escape from holiday guests. <laughs> get me the fuck out the house. Quote, we got a house full of company. This gave me a good excuse to get out for a little. That was Bill Chappell, a Walker supporter from Bartow County who said he typically votes early. Chappell says he hopes the Saturday voting ends up helping Herschel Walker more than Warnock who filed the lawsuit that resulted in the polls here being open a day earlier than had been planned by state election officials. Democrats have organized more around the Saturday early vote and have promoted the option this past week more than Republicans. A total of 27 counties conducted Saturday voting, giving greater opportunities to cast a ballot for voters who may be occupied during the week. The participating counties, which include most of the state's major metropolitan areas, and several rural counties ensured that just over half the state's population had the opportunity to vote on Saturday. Although Warnock received about 35,000 more votes than Herschel Walker in the November 8th election, he did not meet the 50% threshold to outright win, triggering this runoff. A poll released last week by AARP had Warnock ahead of Walker 51 to 47, with a margin of error of 4.4 percentage points, which means they're at a dead heat. Warnock, a senior pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, we know won the Senate seat in a special runoff on January 5th, 2021, and he's seeking a full six-year term. Walker, who won the Heisman in 1982, is a running back for the University of Georgia, was encouraged to run for the seat by former President Donald Trump. His candidacy has generated headlines about his past, including domestic violence and uh, that he paid two former girlfriends at least to have abortions. Walker has campaigned as a staunch opponent of abortion, outright denying that he paid for them and saying he would support a national abortion ban. Initially, the Georgia Secretary of State said counties would be allowed to hold Saturday voting and runoff elections, but he reversed course after deciding that part of Georgia's election code barring voting two days after a holiday banned Saturday voting under the new compressed timeline for a runoff. Democrats, led by Warnock's campaign, sued the state arguing that the policies in question did not apply to runoff elections, only general elections. A judge in Fulton County sided with Warnock, the state Democratic Party, and the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. The state's Republican attorney general, as well as the state's national Republican parties, lost their appeals in the state courts. In a fundraising email, Herschel Walker's campaign told supporters that the decision to allow Saturday voting is like coming out after halftime and learning the referees have changed the rules for the rest of the game. Then a decision of whether to hold Saturday voting fell to the counties. And in Bartow County, located in, that's where the guy who was tired of his family, the Herschel Walker guy, Bartow County, northwest of Atlanta, the Board of Elections decided to do so at one single polling location in Cartersville. Walker won the county by 50 points earlier this month. Peggy Brown, a Democratic member of the Bartow Board of Elections, noted the irony that the two Democrats and one independent on the five-seat board pushed for Saturday voting in that deep red county, while the two Republicans voted against it. 
quote, they didn't think it was worth the money to do it and there would not be a very good turnout. But I think we're going to prove them wrong, she said. As a steady line of voters, both Republicans and Dems circled through the polling location at the municipal building. The additional day of voting cost the county $1,100, and the board was uncertain at first whether they'd have enough workers given holiday travel and people hosting guests from out of town. All counties in Georgia are required by the state's election law to hold early voting from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the weekdays before a runoff election. Several counties, including many of the state's most populous, had planned on holding Sunday voting on this weekend before required early voting begins and passed trigger policies to fund Saturday voting if it was found to be legal. The public debate and litigation over Saturday voting is the latest clash over the state's election laws, which were overhauled by a controversial 2021 voting law that had a significant effect on policies concerning absentee ballots, runoff elections, early voting, and election administrative policy. The 2022 midterms are the first test of the Election Integrity Act, also known as SB202. How the law interacts with other parts of Georgia's election code has led to confusion. Some voters say they don't want to take any chances by waiting until Election Day to cast their ballot. Quote, if there's any glitches or anything like that on the day, then you're kind of, you know, screwed, said Douglas Edwards, a dentist from Cartersville supporting Warnock. Today, if there's something, uh, we could always come back on Tuesday. A number of students cited concerns over their absentee ballots and the ease of Saturday voting while they were home for Thanksgiving. Quote, I'm currently doing an internship out of state. I didn't receive my absentee ballot in time to vote for the midterms, which I was quite upset about. That's Katie Poe, a master's degree student. I'm in town for the holidays and voting this Saturday is my only chance to actually vote in person and maybe vote at all reliably. Quote, I've had a lot of trouble in the past with absentee voting. It's kind of disheartening to be only able to vote when I'm here because it's so important to me, she said. Quote, I'm a college student in school in Boston, and this is pretty much my only opportunity to vote in person. So I had to get out and vote. It's a long line, but we're waiting as best we can. That was Catherine McBride, a college senior from Cobb County. McBride said she voted absentee in the general election, but had to wait two or three weeks for her ballot and was concerned it wouldn't arrive. So she decided to vote in person Saturday at the Cobb County Board of Elections and registration polling locations in Marietta. Kavita Carr, a first year student at Stanford from Marietta, cited similar fears among absentee voting. I'm going back to college tomorrow, she said of her decision to vote on Saturday. For the last election, a lot of my friends didn't receive their ballots from Cobb County on time. (laughs) Seems to be a common thing. College students out of state not receiving their absentee ballots. Several hundred voters waited in line to vote at the Cobb County location on Saturday afternoon, waiting about two hours to cast their ballots. Warnock won Cobb County by 16 points. It's a shame people are having to wait in line to vote. All right, stick around for the good news. We'll be right back after this. Everybody, I have the best holiday season gift alert. Uh, We want to give each person we care about a gift that will bring them joy, right? Well, there is one place you can find a perfect gift for everyone on your list. Mrs. Fields cookies. I am gifting some to all my clients and coworkers and acquaintances and friends this holiday because everyone loves their cookies. Mrs. Fields has just what the gift doctor ordered. This is the feel good giving at its best. And Mrs. Fields will wrap up your delicious cookies in unique creative packages that will thrill the people who get them. For over 45 years, Mrs. Fields has perfected fresh baked gourmet treats. Every cookie, cake and confection is so delicious. They have fresh, delicious cookies, chewy, chocolatey brownies. They have the blondie brownies, the butterscotch ones. Oh, those are my favorite. Unforgettable handcrafted confections. They have it all. I remember when I got my recent package of Mrs. Fields cookies, I opened it up. It was the snowman tower. And it was so incredible. Up in the top were like these delicious chocolate covered candies. And then uh, in the in the middle were these beautiful Christmas wreath frosted cookies. And then in the bottom, uh, that's where that butterscotch... Um, That's where that butterscotch brownie was. And oh my gosh, it is my favorite thing. I have to get more of them. I'm a big fan of their oatmeal raisin walnut as well. It's a perfect gift. You can get them for grandparents, parents, kids, coworkers, or clients. And you can, like, the reason I wanted to get the snowman tower for everybody is because when you're done, you can put it on your desk at work. It's just absolutely the cutest thing. You can choose from a huge selection of holiday gift baskets, cookie tins, uh, and it really is the most creative packaging anywhere. And right now, try Mrs. Fields' Mega Cookie to satisfy the biggest sweet tooth. Share one with a friend or keep it all to yourself. Hmm. And right now, Mrs. Fields is giving the best deal available to podcast listeners. You get 25% off everything site-wide. You can get all your shopping done when you go to mrsfields.com slash beans. That's right. Mrs. Fields is giving that exclusive deal only to podcast listeners. 25% off everything site-wide at mrsfields.com slash beans. That's 25% off at MRS. F-I-E-L-D-S dot com slash beans. And another amazing gift idea. Do you take millions of photos? Right now I have like 15,000 sitting in my phone. But what if you could put all your photos from random camera rolls into a high-res wedding album uh, on one gorgeous frame? 
Well, now you can with Aura Frames. Aura Frames makes digital picture frames designed to easily and instantly fill your home with photos of family and friends and places shared instantly from an app. There is free unlimited storage. You can invite as many people as you want to the frame. There's no hidden fees, no subscriptions. Aura Frames makes easy, meaningful holiday gifts, especially for the hard to shop people. You can preload with your favorite photos and even a personalized video message, which is usually very funny. Uh, And there's no need to wrap it because every box comes already ready to gift. Last year, it was a struggle to find meaningful gifts for family and friends. But this year, I have Aura Frames. It solved all my problems. Named the best digital picture frame by Wirecutter, The Strategist, and more, Aura is nothing like the digital frames from a decade ago. And every Aura frame is thoughtfully designed to fit any decor style with stunning HD displays, unlimited storage, super easy setup, and like I said, no fees. Right now, you could take advantage of Aura's Cyber Monday sale. You get up to $50 off Aura's best-selling carbon matte frames. Just go to AuraFrames.com slash Daily Beans. These are Aura's lowest prices ever, ever. So get yours now before they sell out. And if you miss this sale, there will be great deals this holiday season. Don't worry. But that's Aura, A-U-R-A, Frames.com slash Daily Beans for up to $50 off Aura's best-selling carbon matte frames. Terms and conditions apply. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news? Good news, good news. And if you have any good news, confessions, corrections, if you want to tell me about how dumb Louis Gohmert is, or, uh, you know, any anything you want to send in, I, the Halloween photos, especially animals in Halloween costumes, pod pet pics, I would love to see them. I'm now posting pod pet pics on the Patreon app, uh, because, you know, in case Twitter blows up, I'm going to be posting over on on Patreon. If you want to get my Twitter feed, if it blows up, you, we have a special Twitter only follower a subscription. It's $12 a year, a year. So come on over. And uh, gosh, anything you want to send good news, please do. We're going to need it. The news is going to start coming. Well, I, I always say that, but it's always coming fast and furious and we will always need the good news. So send it in at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. And reminder, for holiday gift ideas, there are two ways to donate or gift a premium subscription. One is by going to dailybeanspod.com, scrolling down to the Patron Sponsoring Patrons button. This will give a feed anonymously to someone on a waiting list. The other way is to go to dailybeans.supercast.com and click the Gift a Subscription button in the upper right-hand corner. This way you can gift a subscription directly to someone you know. Cool. All right, let's kick this off. First up from Jane, she and her. Hi, I love you, and I will be giving my dad a Crimes and Crimes and Crimes shirt because of how much he liked mine. This is a high compliment as he doesn't care about physical objects at all, except when they're both smart and hilarious. Thank you, Jane. This is an awkward correction. I don't really think I'm in a great position to make it. But being a fellow white person, I kind of hope you don't put it on the air because of how targeted it is. But I follow a fair number of indigenous people on Twitter, and I've noticed that many of them do not appreciate the way Lakota Man represents them. And the way he's the only Native person a lot of white people pay attention to. If you're willing, I'd like to suggest you follow other different Native Indigenous people on Twitter. A large number, so that you have a better sample of this non-monolithic group. Especially when it comes to topic as tender as how should white people relate to Thanksgiving. Thanks for everything you do. I am more confident since I started listening to The Daily Beans. And the effect on my well-being can't be underestimated. I'm attaching a couple photos from my wildlife rehab volunteering stint this summer. Oh my god, that's so cool. Both are baby robins, and I think they look like little old men until they open their beaks, and then they look like dinosaurs. (laughs) Jane, thank you so much. Please feel free to send in any follows. Uh, I'm happy to follow more and more and more and as many people as I possibly can. Thank you for that suggestion. Oh, look at these babies. (laughs) You're right. They do look like dinosaurs when they open their mouths. I always think of birds as little dinosaurs because that's what they are kind of. All right, next up from Anthony. I love this podcast. This isn't a major correction. I've worked in mental health for almost 20 years while I vehemently disagree with the far right wing of the Republican Party, calling them psychotic while marginally accurate. They are deluded. Only further stigma against people who live with psychosis and mental illness. Two, on the one hand, I think about protecting mental health and then using pathological and loaded language to talk about those we disagree with only further stigma and makes it harder for those who need to get help. Lean into the swearing. Just call it horseshit. Thank you, Anthony. I, I've actually been proactively working on this just because for so long, um, you know, and when I watch Maddo, she said she does it too. She's like, this is crazy. This is psychotic. This is, you know, and so 
I have been proactively doing my best to change that language because I feel I have PTSD. I feel this really hard. I'm, I will continue to work hard on that horseshit I like. I'm going to try to stick with it. Ape shit, horse shit, whatever. All right, next up from Matthew. No pronouns. First off, I want to thank you for all you do to keep some of us sane amongst insanity. But now, in the spirit of promoting a business, I want to promote my son's business. EerieStreetThrift.com is a great source for high quality used items. He is a hardworking young man that I couldn't be more proud of and deserves an assist from the mighty audience you all have earned. I am doing this without his knowledge, so I don't know if I'm promoting his business exactly as he would. So I hope this isn't as cheesy or inept as I feel it may be. I love my son. I wanted to help him in any way I can. Once you started asking to promote small businesses, I have run out of reasons why I wasn't writing this. Thank you again for all you do. And thank you for listening to this father ramble on about his awesome son and his growing business. Bonus, buying previously used items is better for the environment. Thank you very much, Matthew. It's Erie, E-R-I-E, EerieStreetThrift.com. Next up, Michaela. Her, uh, Michaela. Okay, sorry. The the German, (laughs) living in Germany for so long. Michaela. Hello, Michaela. Pronoun she and her. Hi, friends. I volunteer for a technical animal rescue. We rescue companion animals and livestock in emergency situations in Washington state. Dogs who have fallen off cliffs, horses stuck in wells, crows in ravines, that kind of thing. Most of our calls involve using rope rigging systems and custom equipment that we train often for. We're 100% volunteer run and donation supported nonprofit and would like to ask if you'd be willing to mention us for Giving Tuesday coming up November 29th. You can find us at W-A-S-A-R-T dot org to read about some of our stories and donate. That's W-A-S-A-R-T dot org. For pet tax, it is our pleasure to share a picture of Flint, a bulldog who wandered off a cliff. We set up a rope system and sent some volunteers down to bring him back up. The best part was how he snorted the whole way up. He was 100% okay after his adventure as well. Thank you. Everybody, Giving Tuesday. That's W-A-S-A-R-T dot org. Oh, look at, oh, look at these rescue guys repelling and, oh my goodness. Yeah, that takes so much training and so much equipment. So everybody, Giving Tuesday, check it out. And thanks, Michaela. Thanks for doing this incredible work. From Gwendolyn W., no pronouns. Christmas cats. I skipped the tree last year because I had a cat that just turned one. <laughs> Since then, Clancy has grown to a more ridiculous size, so I was still quite nervous. So, so far, so good. Bonus, find the cat. My manager's cat helped her with her decorations. Oh, look at Look at the chonkies. Okay, let me see if I can find the cat here. I do not see the cat. I do not see the cat. Oh, wait there. I see the cat. I got the cat over there. That is, that was a good find the cat. Thank you for sending that in. Look at the, <laughs> so good. And then the, hello, in the stocking on the back of the chair. Very cute. Thank you for sending these in. I love Christmas kitties. I always have a, my tree is naked about halfway up. And then I have the ornaments because, because, you know, Bruce Willis. From Anne Marie, Anna Marie, pronoun she and her. This Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for you. See if you can find our rescue kitty in this photo. His name is Sirius Black, named before the terrible comments tweeted by she who will not be named here. Thank you for all you do. Look at, there he is. What a beautiful baby. <laughs> Thank you for sending that in. Yeah, sometimes because I have a black comforter or black woobies, like or my black, my robe is black. So I'm kind of a goth, right? So uh, all of, <laughs> I, I, I always am looking for the cat and uh, I'm glad he's got a little white on his face because I can spot him now. And finally, we have a submission from Janine. She and her longtime listener, first good newser. The amazing news is too good to keep to myself. Uh, as a public school government teacher, I'm always looking for cool and interesting speakers that embody essential traits of engaged citizens. I can see the photo here. Doing the right thing without regard for self-check. Speaking out in the face of opposition. Check. No BS. Double check. And not charging a dime to drive two hours and spend all day with high school students. Triple check. Former D.C. officer Michael Fanone is a national treasure for his willingness to speak his truth to young people who actually care about the future. And he brought his dog, Buddy, to hang out with us, too. Look at this. This is amazing. What, a, what, like he's a friend of mine and I, I cannot say enough good things about these guys. Him, Harry Dunn, Officer Hodges, Officer Gunnell, 
all of the Capitol Police officers that uh, that I've met are, are just absolutely some of the best people that I've known that I that I've gotten the chance to meet. Just all self sacrifice. They all care about the truth. They all care about accountability, and they all care about justice. This is fantastic. I'm so glad. I'm interested to know what they thought of his neck tattoos, Janine, <laughs> because uh, you know they're my favorite. All right. Thank you so much for sending this in. I'll, I'll put a shout out to Mike and and, uh, and thank him personally too. If you have any good news you want to send in, you can do it by going to dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. All right. It's been a heck of a, a weekend. And, and this week we're going to get that 11th circuit thing. I'm going to work on a new podcast. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So Dana will be back tomorrow. I can't wait. I miss her every time she's gone. So until then, everybody, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q. And bring someone with you. I've been AG, and them's the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill, with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg and Amy Carrero. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane, with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for the Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. M-S-W-Media.